The secret to Dexter Gordon's unique style is hidden in plain sight, but most musicians are hardly aware of it. And it's not his tone or his use of quotes, it's the way he uses rhythm. Now, the biggest idiosyncrasy here is definitely his time feel. So often, when we think of jazz, we think of swung quavers, right? So rather than splitting that beat equally in two, we have the first half being slightly longer than the second half. Check out the start of Joe Henderson's solo on Out of the Night, for example. Those quavers are really quite uneven, right? It's long, short, long, short. Sometimes thought of a little bit like a triplet feel. But Dexter rarely plays like that. A lot of his solos are made up almost entirely of straight or even quavers. Check out his solo on Cheesecake, for example. And then if I slow that down so you can more easily hear how much he is or isn't swinging, you'll hear that the first bunch of quavers are almost entirely straight. And fine, he does go on to add in a bit of a sense of swung quavers towards the end, but it's still nowhere near as uneven as the ones that we heard Joe Henderson play. And there's something else going on with his feel as well. He almost always plays really far behind the beat. If I play that same extract again and really listen to the bass and drums and where they're placing the beat. Dexter is always just a fraction of a second behind the beat, right? And this doesn't just happen on up-tempo tunes. On ballads, he pushes it to the extremes. Check out Darn That Dream, for example. Here, he is so far behind the beat, it's almost like he's playing with a different band. Now, if you're trying to replicate this straight quavers behind the beat sound, just be a little bit careful. It sounds incredible when it's done well, but it's really easy to just sound like you're not really playing in time and like you don't really know what you're doing. But Dexter clearly never had that problem. And the key is to make sure that you're mixing in moments of swung quavers and moments that are a bit more on top of the beat with your straight quavers and your behind the beat feel. And to make sure that regardless of whether you're playing straight, swung, behind the beat or on top of the beat, you're still using accents and all that other good stuff to make your playing rhythmically interesting. I know it sounds complicated, but if you play along with Dexter, making sure to include all of these little things and then try and replicate that just playing along to a drum loop, it will become easier than it sounds. But the way that Dexter utilised rhythm wasn't limited just to time feel. The way he constructed his solos was intrinsically linked with rhythm. Riffs, for example, are a really common feature in his playing. There are four different types of riff that Dexter used. There are his repeated cell riffs, like in bars 23 to 29 of his second balcony jump solo.
There were his three beat cells, like bars 81 to 84 of his solo on Cheesecake. Single note riffs, like the start of his third chorus on Second Balcony Jump. And call and response riffs, like bars 40 to 44 of his solo on The Backbone. Now, although riffs are clearly very prominent within Dexter's playing, they never last for long, usually only two or three beats at a time, to mark the start of a new chorus or a new section within that chorus. And another really important aspect here is that Dexter rarely uses any rhythmic displacement within these riffs. Now, rhythmic displacement is just when you have an idea and then move it to a different place in the bar. So if I had a riff that lasted for three beats, and then I kept repeating that over and over again without a break, well, the first time I played it might be on beat one, but then the next time I played it would have to be on beat four, then on beat three, and then beat two, and so on and so on, and it would sound something like this. And this can create quite a lot of rhythmic tension, but Dexter limits this as much as possible. That rhythmic displacement kind of happens naturally in any three beat cell riff, as we've just heard, but Dexter limits it by only repeating each one a short number of times, and then really hitting beat one firmly again to regain a sense of rhythmic stability. The start of his second solo on second balcony jump is a great example of this. He plays the cell three times to get us back to beat one before going into the next phrase. I go into way more depth on everything rhythmic, as well as his harmonic and melodic language in my ebook Dig In Dexter. Be sure to check that out, and there's a link down in the description. But there's one more way that Dexter really effectively uses rhythm, and it's one that is completely ignored by so many musicians, especially when it comes to their practice and improving their own playing. The lengths of his phrases. Unsurprisingly, for someone of Dexter Gordon's genius, there's of course loads of variety. I mean, in his second balcony jump solo, his phrases vary from one and a half beats long to 32 and a half beats long, but overall, they tend to be less than two bars in length and either start or end off the beat. Check out his cheesecake solo from bars 24 onwards. He starts off with a seven and a half beat phrase. Then there's a six and a half beat phrase. Then there's a really tiny three and a half beat phrase. Then another seven and a half beat phrase. And having so many short phrases adds a level of intensity and rhythmic tension that because of his behind the beat time feel could very easily be missing. But you know, if Dexter only ever played short phrases, it would start to sound quite stale. So he juxtaposes them with phrases of wildly different lengths. He builds up the intensity with those short phrases before releasing it with a far longer one. In fact, where we just got to in the Cheesecake solo, he follows up all of those short phrases with a 21 beat long phrase, his longest in the entire solo. <laughs> And working this sort of phrasing into your own playing is quite simple, although admittedly a little bit challenging. Play a few short, syncopated phrases, and then follow them up with a longer one to release that tension. And this works really well on mid and up-tempo tunes, where it adds a sense of swing and rhythmic direction and forward momentum to your playing.
And if you could marry that together with the behind the beat time feel, the straight quavers and the riffs, you'd really start to sound quite reminiscent of Dexter. For a thorough breakdown of the other ways that Dexter uses rhythm within his solos, as well as the ways he uses melody and harmony, be sure to check out my ebook Dig in Dexter. And for a few insights into how he constructs his melodies, check out this video next.